I recently found one of these seeds in my garden, which was kind of interesting because it hadn't come off a tree anywhere nearby. But what I love about these seeds is that when you drop them, they spin like a helicopter and float down slowly to the ground. But why do they? Now when I ask this question, I'm not looking for the reason why they spin, but instead, why does the spinning of the seed cause it to fall slower than if it wasn't spinning? Here I have a three-bladed rotor head. It's 3D printed and each blade is angled down at five degrees to cause it to spin when dropped from a high altitude. Now this has a diameter of 60 centimeters and I also have a parachute with a diameter of 60 centimeters. Now the surface area of this parachute is 10 times the surface area of those three blades. So I also have one more parachute which has the same surface area as the three blades. And what we're going to do is we're going to drop them from this large drone and see how fast they fall. So let's first give the large parachute a test. So I do actually get an altitude readout on my transmitter here. So here we go, test number one of the large parachute. There we go. Landing all by itself. So now let's remove the large parachute and bolt on the rotor head and then we'll drop it from the same height. Oh, oh, the parachute's lifted. <laughs> okay, so it's now at 41 meters, which is basically the same as before. Releasing in three, two, one. Hey, that's working excellent. Right, now return to home. So the drone is flying itself back. Whilst I go and get the rotor head. Right, so it seems like we have some damage. That must have hit the uh, ground at quite a high RPM and obviously just broke at the hub, which is where the weakest point is. Cool, so that was a successful test, apart from the break of the blade, uh, but it floated down nice and slowly. I have a small feeling that this thing is going to drop like a rock. I suppose that's what we're here to test out. Why does the spinning of the rotor blade cause it to fall slower than if it were just a parachute? In three, two, one. <laughs> so the large parachute had the slowest descent rate at about 3.5 meters per second and the rotor blade hit the ground about six seconds earlier giving an average descent rate of about 5.5 meters per second however it did also take almost two seconds for the rotor head to spin up therefore i've done some quick calculations to work out the actual descent rate to be about four meters per second so it's faster than the large parachute with the same diameter however it did fall a lot slower than the smaller parachute with the same surface area which fell at just over 10 meters per second. So why does the spinning of the rotor blade cause it to fall slower than if it wasn't spinning? At first, it might seem intuitive to assume that the spinning causes it to act like a disc, as if the world of fluid dynamics worked like a long exposure camera shot. But unfortunately, fluid dynamics aren't that simple. As the blade rotates, the tip of the blades are traveling a lot faster than the blade part near the hub, due to it traveling a greater distance in the same amount of time. Now, because the blade is falling downwards, there is an oncoming air hitting it from underneath, but there is also a horizontal direction to the airflow due to the rotation of the blade. This results in an oncoming airflow angle looking something like this. Now, if we look at the airflow hitting the tip of the blade, it reveals a greater horizontal velocity airflow due to its greater rotational speed, which not only means it's experiencing a greater airspeed, but also a reduced angle to the oncoming air. If we label what the lift and drag forces look like, we get a resultant force close to vertically upwards. And if we do the same for the center of the blade, we get a force angled slightly forwards. This is essentially how auto gyros work, where a center section of the rotor blade is acting like a wind turbine, causing the whole thing to spin. And this drives the outermost section of the rotor blade, which is basically a fast moving wing and produces lift. Okay, so that's all well and good, but why would you pick a rotor head over a parachute? Parachutes are far simpler, far lighter, and can be packed into a small space before deployment. Well, I'm glad you asked because so did NASA. I found this archive of old footage on the NASA Langley YouTube channel, which I highly recommend you check out if you're interested in all sorts of experimental testing. And I found this footage of what looks like a space capsule with an auto-rotating rotor head attached to it. In that same video, they were also testing an interesting parachute known as a vortex ring parachute, which is designed to spin once deployed. I then found this Apogee newsletter, which contained information on how to build your own spinning parachute, which apparently has almost twice the coefficient of drag as a regular chute. So let's build one. 
The instructions didn't have exact dimensions, but more of a guide to build your own sized parachute. So I scaled this one to have the exact same surface area as the large parachute I tested earlier. That way I can test both parachutes to get a comparison. Right, so I now have the conventional parachute with a diameter of 60 centimeters, and I also have the rotary parachute with the same surface area. Okay, we're gonna start with the conventional parachute. And because it's slightly windier today, uh, I've got a slightly heavier weight to drop from it. Okay, that's about 40 meters. Dropping in three, two, one. That fell very fast. Right, so next up we have the rotary parachute. If it doesn't get tangled itself. Three, two, one. I mean, that kind of spins. So it kind of works. But I think we need to run the test a few more times whilst we hear a word from our sponsor. Skillshare offers thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people on topics including design, video, freelancing and more. Membership gets you unlimited access to thousands of online classes with hands-on projects and feedback from a large community of other creators. So how about making 2020 a year where you explore new skills and get lost in the creativity with Skillshare's online classes? I highly recommend this introduction to Aerial Videography class as it runs through all the essentials when starting with drone videography, such as safe and legal practices, understanding how to operate a camera, and also how to pre-plan drone flight to get the best shots possible once at location. Skillshare is also incredibly affordable with an annual subscription working out at less than $10 per month. Skillshare is supporting this project by offering a two month free premium membership. So check out the link in the description down below if you want to become a member today. So this was the best test of the Vortex Ring parachute that I was able to capture. Falling with a descent rate of 3.7 meters per second, which was less than half the speed of the regular chute, with the same weight falling at 7.5 meters per second. I think the regular chute may have fared better in low winds as it did swing pretty violently, probably increasing the descent rate by quite a bit. I really wanted to test the vortex ring parachute a bit more, but then this happened. But I decided to release the weight anyway. Oh, that didn't work. That could have easily taken out this drone. <laughs> Good job I had a low quality string. Hmm. Right, I'm covered in mud. The drone's covered in mud. And so is the weight. <laughs> also the parachute's destroyed, so let's go back inside. In conclusion, I think the Vortex Ring parachute is a really interesting concept, but I also think that there's a reason why NASA aren't using it on their space capsules today. Yes, the coefficient of drag is greater for the same amount of material used. However, in the end, a recovery system has to be reliable. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be great if you could leave a thumbs up down below. If you're new to my channel and want to see other projects similar to this, please click subscribe down below. And a huge thanks to all of my supporters over on patreon.com for making these videos possible. Also, a quick update. If you're already subscribed to me, you'll notice that this video isn't uploaded on Friday like they usually are. Uh, and that's just because I'm switching things up a little. Also, I've created a second channel, uh, which thanks to everyone over on Twitter was voted the highest name to be uh, Tim Station, uh, which may be subject to change. Um, and on that channel, I'm just gonna upload uh, slightly less effort content. Um, I'm probably going to make some short videos. Uh, and very soon, actually, I want to make a video on this drone because uh, I built this drone from scratch. It's all CNC cut on my CNC mill and uh, quite a few people have been asking uh, after my Dam Busters video where I got the drone from. So I may make a short video on more information about this. So if you want to go check out my second channel, click the icon either here or here, wherever. Um, and yeah, thanks once again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.